everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placone and Roger Rittenhouse. Hi, Roger. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've been watching the Rachel Maddow show here, and she's uh, lost her mind, and people are noticing. And I'm not saying that's not even hyperbole. She's out of her mind. <laughs> Uh, she's turned into a full-blown 24-7, top of her lungs, million miles an hour, red-baiting, McCarthy-smearing news anchor. The way I've heard it put the best was uh, from Janet Malcolm of The New Yorker. She recently described Rachel Maddow's show as, quote, a piece of sleight of hand presented as a cable news show. Right, you watch her show. She's got all these little pieces of information she puts together and all turns out to Trump is a Russian. Trump is a traitor. It's all, it's just, oh, can't, everybody's a traitor. Everybody's a corrupt and collusion. Blah, 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 blah. But she never, anyway. Remember she got Trump's taxes? Remember that? And she blamed you for believing her. Uh, <laughs> she says a piece of, it, it's called, she calls the Rachel Maddow show a piece of sleight of hand presented as cable news show. It is, this, by the way, this is in New York, the New Yorker. Uh, it is an TV entertainment at its finest. It permits liberals to enjoy themselves during what may be the most thoroughly unenjoyable times of their political lives. So if you want to hate Trump, you turn on Rachel Maddow and she just tells you a story about how horrible Trump is. And she connects the dots in a way that doesn't make sense to anybody because apparently Trump is so, so corrupt that Rachel Maddow can do a show about it 45 minutes every night. Yet, and Trump is a bumbling idiot, yet he's managed to stay one step ahead of the NSA, the CIA, and the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security. They just can't seem to nail this son of a bitch. Even though they have every text he's ever made, every phone call Trump's ever made, and every email he's ever made, the government has it, and they have it from all his insiders, too. His everybody in his family, everybody in his cabinet, everybody in his business. They've got everybody's data and information and texts and phone calls and emails, and he still stays one step ahead of them. But Rachel Maddow will tell you for an hour every night how corrupt he is, and she's figured it out. It's like basically her show is like seven degrees of separation from Trump. Yes. Who, by the way, knows Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Trump knows. Ron Placone. So that's what this, that's a great, I just want to read it to you one more time. I hope I'm not being too redundant. A piece of sleight of hand presented as a cable news show. It is TV entertainment at its finest. It permits liberals to enjoy themselves during what may be the most thoroughly unenjoyable times of their political lives. So like when Republicans would turn on Sean Hannity when Barack Obama got uh, elected and he would tell them, all, you know, he's Saul Alinsky and Jeremiah Wright and this guy's a communist and look at, he's going to kill him. They would go, oh, I know it, I know it. She does the same thing, and she does it a little worse because John Hannity never accused, never red-baited, as far as I know. Uh, but here, people else, other people are noticing. What the hell was this Rachel Maddow segment? She did a segment yesterday that has everybody baffled. That's the, uh, that's the headline at the HuffPo. Even the Huffington Post, by the way, we're in the same corporate neoliberal bed that Rachel Maddow's in. Even they're calling her out. It starts off with, it was a vintage Rachel Maddow stem winder. A deaf 25-minute weaving of carefully curated soundbite screenshots and of news reports, slick maps and graphics, all strung together to make the case that something fishy is afoot. It's a style Maddow has perfected and has propelled her to the top of the ratings heap. She's the top of the ratings heap. She's the Bill O'Reilly of MSNBC. Bill O'Reilly was number one at Fox, spewing bullshit. Rachel Maddow is number one at MSNBC, spewing bullshit. And you know who taught her how to do it? Her good friend, Roger Ailes. The sexual predator, Roger Ailes, who Rachel Maddow calls her good friend. Oh, can I say something real quick? <laughs> Uh, this article is written by Willa Fredge, who is a HuffPost reporter based in London, focuses on international fear affairs and went to Yale. So if anyone's going to be like, oh, well, this is probably just a, a right wing fluff piece criticizing uh -huh. the corporate left. That's not what this is. Just want to throw that out there right now. That's totally not what this and is. And believe me, it had to be written by somebody in another country because all the goddamn mainstream journalists in America are too afraid to say something against the Russian narrative that the CIA is propagating through the Washington Post. Okay, and Rachel Maddow and CNN and everybody else. Um, there was just one problem with this news segment she did because it was about she did a news segment about the soldiers that were killed in Niger. And well, here I was, here's what the problem is. 
her, 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 what was her theory, Ron? What was what was Rachel Maddow's theory about how those soldiers died in Niger? Rachel Maddow's theory, essentially in a nutshell, is that because the travel ban that Trump's proposing, the Muslim ban, uh, included Chad now, uh, which it's confusing why it includes Chad, but nonetheless it includes Chad, and she's saying that's why those American soldiers were killed in Niger because, because Trump- Chad was uh, was you know kind of just. They were doing military uh, efforts in the region, uh, even though the groups aren't necessarily related, as this article explains. Uh, but Rachel Maddow saying, well, that's why it put Americans in danger because Chad was mad about the, the travel ban. So they're saying, well, we're not going to help anymore. So now that, that all that happened. OK. All right. So there was just one problem with that theory. There wasn't that a year ago. The but no, this just happened. The Niger. No, no. The travel ban. The travel ban. They're only is- getting mad a year later. I. Well, I guess they keep trying to it gets keep getting struck down, and he keeps trying to reinstitute it. But right? still, that was nine months ago when he had the travel ban, and it seems odd that they would all of a sudden. You mean something that Rachel Maddow said? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't very... make sense. <laughs> get, join the yeah, get ready. There was just one problem. Maddow's theory was so flimsy that it could be debunked by a quick glance at a map, let alone a phone call with an expert. Maddow's segment was designed to strongly suggest, without outright stating, that Trump's addition of Chad and his latest travel ban prompted the country to remove its troops from Niger, leading to an increase in extremist attacks and ultimately claiming the lives of four U.S. soldiers. Yeah, so Chad's a new addition. So Chad's a new addition. That's how she got this. Chad's a new addition. That's how she put it together. Right. And here's a little bit. Here's a little bit of that uh, that report. We'll show. It's a twenty. It was a twenty five minute report. It was a twenty five minute report. I I did screen the whole yeah, thing. I appreciate and, you yeah, doing that. Yeah, she kind of was. Yeah. So here's a little, <laughs> I narrowed it down to this. So here's a little bit of it. We'll just show. A country you. where that's happening, right? I mean, maybe you could make. By the way, here. So this is Chad. This is a Niger. The attack took place somewhere over here, and she's saying it was because of. And so if you look at a. No. Okay. By the way, here's Libya. Right up there. Okay. (laughs) That case that Chad has a terrorism problem, certainly they've had some attacks. But they're not the... If that's the problem, they're not the... So she's trying to go, why would you ban Chad? Why? Right? That's what she's saying here. Why would you ban Chad? I mean, if that's the reason you end up on the travel ban list, even just in that part of the world, why wouldn't you pick Nigeria? Why wouldn't you pick Mali? I mean, broaden it out a little bit. Why wouldn't you pick Iraq? Why wouldn't you pick Afghanistan? No, Chad's the country that has terrorism? It's absolutely baffling. Absolutely baffling. And, and, and Not as baffling as your new show. <laughs> Not as baffling as what you think you're doing, a Rhodes Scholar doing unbelievable, the most disgusting form of propaganda and calling it a new show. That's what's baffling to me. You're a Rhodes Scholar, so you know what you're doing is horrible, but they pay you $30,000 a day, and you now have the highest ratings in all of cable for news. So uh, who cares? So who cares? Talk about mission creep, huh? Now your whole life is this. Your whole life is this, Rachel, and people are fucking sick of it, and they're calling you out. That is why you got all those quotes from the experts. Bewildering, puzzling, no reason. This makes no sense. The day after the travel ban was announced, the New York Times interviewed the man who had been the State Department's expert on that region until last year when we got rid of all the experts. Uh, He called putting Chad on that list, quote, a knee-jerk move rather than a careful decision, one that could put Americans in harm's way. He said there's no incentive to label Chad as soft on terrorism, which they definitely are not. Now, I want you just to stick a pin in one part of that quote there. This could put Americans in harm's way. You see that? That is the guy who used to be the State Department expert on Chad until last year. A country where that's happening. So I'll just stop it. (laughs) That's enough. Wow. So then this article goes on to say Chad's pullout from Niger had an immediate effect in emboldening ISIS attacks. You just heard her say that. That appears to be false. According to the Council on Foreign Relations and accounts from local residents, the attacks that have increased can be tracked back to militant group Boko Haram, which is just based across the border in Nigeria. So, 
A group of Boko Haram, mil Haram militants broke away and formed the Islamic State West Africa, Laura, Laura C.A., an assistant professor in Colby's College Department of Government, told Huffington Post. But they are separate from the so-called Islamic State in the Greater Sahara, the group that reportedly carried out the ambush, although no group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Chadian troops were present in Niger specifically to ward off Boko Haram threat. They had nothing to do with the Islamic State in the Greater Sahara. They were also based almost 800 miles away in an area called Diffa that's long been battling the group. So Ra Rachel Maddow is saying it's because Chad was fighting ISIS. They're not. They're fighting Boko Haram. And... Uh, any expert asked about Chadian troops battling ISIS in Niger would have said, no, that's crazy. Everybody that I know is appalled by this. I would like to think that Maddow's researchers are more responsible. I'm sure her researchers are more responsible, <laughs> but Rachel Maddow isn't. Rachel Maddow, and this is not hyperbole, is a fucking raving lunatic out of her mind. What she's doing every night should embarrass Sean Hannity, let alone someone who calls herself a Rhodes Scholar. And she's not embarrassed. Rachel Maddow is now through the looking glass, people. Plus, the pullout of Canadian troops isn't necessarily related to the travel ban, ban as Rachel Maddow implied. It may have already been planned, and the travel ban was the straw that broke the camel's back, Sia said. Chadadians didn't want to keep their forces there forever, and were at least looking to scale down. If we do see the travel ban lifted, I'm not sure you'd see the Chadadians go back in. Maddow referred to the ambush as absolutely baffling. We showed you that. But an attack of this nature was almost inevitable. Saya added, seeing as American special forces teams are operating in remote areas in an in advise and assist capacity, training military personnel across the region. We've told you this. We have over a thousand military bases around the world. Thousand military bases around the world. That's more military bases than there are countries. And um, we don't there's we don't know. There's probably more. We don't know because a lot of them are secret. And uh, so, yeah, they're going to get killed all over the place. And nobody even knows why they're there. Why are we in Jujir? Why are we in Jujir? And even though they're technically in an advisory capacity, it's not uncommon for these troops to end up in the line of fire, she noted. They go on patrol with local military, so they're technically not fighting, but they're right there together. By reducing the story to its mythic fundamentals, this is great summary. By reducing the story to its mythic fundamentals, Janet Malcolm wrote earlier this month, Maddow creates the illusion of completeness that novels and short stories create. We feel that this is the story as we listen to and watch her tell it. It's a tactic that right-wing hosts like Sean Hannity and Alex Jones have perfected. Building myths using unrelated or unreliable information in ways that brought us the birther lie and the Benghazi controversy, putting the country on a path to fake news and the Trump presidency. Or, or it's like Glenn Beck. You know like how Glenn Beck would have those things yes. where he'd have those the chalkboard? Blackboard, yeah. That, yeah, the blackboard. And he would make those connections. Right. And you would listen to these connections he's making and you'd be like, how do you dress yourself in the morning? Yeah. Like, how mm -hmm. do you pull that off? Yeah. Saying this out loud. It, it, it's, it is the same thing. Uh, it's, well, I've been saying that for a couple months now. I used to think it was the right wing that did this. Turns out the left wing does it gladly. Joy Ann Reed, Chris Hayes, Rachel Maddow. They have no trouble doing this propaganda. That They live for it, almost. The article, this is the last I'll show you. It says, on Thursday, Maddow reduced the story so thoroughly that it lost any semblance of a larger truth. So there you go, Rachel Maddow. We already have one video on this channel where I talk about Rachel Maddow's losing her mind and people are noticing. That was when <laughs> Vox noticed. No, no, that was The Intercept. That was The Intercept noticed how bad she was, and they wrote an article about it. Uh, here's an, someone else catching on. Of course, it's someone from England. 
Because you know, I don't know if you know Thomas Frank, who wrote the What's the Matter with Kansas and Listen Liberal. He writes for The Guardian because they don't hire real reporters in the United States anymore who tell the truth about the neoliberals and the uh, corporate plutocrats. They don't they don't do it. That's why he has to. That's why New York Times bestselling author has to work for a foreign newspaper. So Rachel Maddow doesn't. She works right here, right? Because she is doing the bidding of the of the red baiting plutocrats, and she's happy to do it. And Rachel Maddow is revealing she is uh, an empty vessel with zero integrity, uh, to the point where she needs a psychiatric help. I think she really needs psychiatric help, and she's got enough money to get it, uh, but I bet she doesn't. And, uh, boy, it really does blow the hole through that idea. I used to have that just be, as, as, as uh, Representative Richard Martin said on our show, that the liberals are so stupid they think just because someone's gay they're moral. <laughs> <laughs> well, if an attack happens in Los Angeles, Rachel Maddow can tell you that she doesn't know exactly where the answer is, but she's pretty sure it's in El Paso, Texas. That's ah! where you start. <laughs> So it's great to see Rachel Maddow getting called out for what she is. It won't affect her because everybody in the establishment wants her to keep doing this. And it's only principled people who actually have integrity who are noticing and calling it out. Great job, Willa. Great job. And, of course, it can only come from uh, the U.K. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>